In the last video, we talked about how we can round up or down certain numbers by describing how many decimal places we want to retain in our number. And the basic method that we followed in order to achieve that was basically we look at the number of decimal places that the number has, and then we would say something like, okay, let's say we want to round to two decimal places. So in this case, what we do is we count two decimal places after the dot, and then we say, okay, so the next, the number next to it, what is that going to be? Well, clearly this number is 9, so it is closer to 10, which means that we need to round it up. So if we round this one up, this one is going to become 0, and then this one is actually going to become 8. So in the end, we're going to write this number as 256.18. And we also discussed how when we're expressing this kind of equivalence, we use the approximate sign instead of equals because we know that the two numbers are not equal but they're approximately equal to a reasonable amount of accuracy uh, for this question for example we also know that we have a number like this we look at the two decimal places the first two and then we're going to be looking at the number right next to them in this case it is also closer to 10 than it is to zero so we're going to round this one up so if we round this to 10, this means that this one is going to increase by one unit. So in the end, this is going to be approximately equal to 3481.99. And then for this last one, we do the exact same thing. So we're going to grab the first two digits. We're going to look at the, right, the one next to them. And then we're going to round it up because it's closer to 10. Now, this is a very special case because if this one becomes 10 and we want to increase this digit by 1, this one is, is in itself going to reach 10, which means that we're going to have to also add a 1 to this one. So this one is going to become 0, this one is going to become 2. So in the end, this is going to be equal to 5.2. But there is, a, there is a, a little bit of a problem with this one because we said we wanted to run to two decimal places, so we should have two decimals in this number. Well, this one is just zero, so if we wanted to be more explicit, we would just write the zero there. It doesn't really make any difference in terms of the number, but it is just going to express the answer in a more, um, I guess, a more direct way. Because if we were writing these numbers on a list, and we said that each of them is going to be expressed uh, to two decimal places, it would make sense to just keep that consistency throughout the list of numbers. Now in this video, what I wanted to focus on is the concept of significant figures. So, we've already talked about how decimal places can be changed by doing this little trick of bringing them either up or down, depending on how close they are to 10 or 0. And we can use the same kind of procedure to actually round numbers based on whole numbers. So, for example, suppose we have a very large number but it has way too many digits it could have something like a million digits obviously we don't want to write the whole number we would just write the digits that matter in essence what we do is we look at a number so let's say we have something like two three five seven eight right we're going to look at the number from the left so we're going to say okay so let's say we want to round this number just do two significant figures. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the two digits on the left hand side. So basically the two leftmost digits in the number. And then we're going to look at everything else on the right hand side. But in essence, because we're doing the same technique as we use for decimals, we're only going to look at the number that is right next to them. So in this case, what we can tell from this is that, well, this 5 here, it's closer to 10 than it is to 0. And by the rules of rounding up, we know that this is going to go up as well. So basically, we could, to a certain amount of inaccuracy in this case, we could round up this number to 24,000. Now, of course, that doesn't seem like a very wise thing to do because obviously this number is a lot larger than this one. And there's a very significant difference between the two. But if we wanted to be more accurate, we could have said, okay, let's round it to three significant figures. And in that case, we could have written something like 23. And if it's three significant figures, we're going to look at the number on over here. And then we're just going to round this one up. So that's going to become 
600. So that would be the, num the same number, but it would be approximated to only three significant figures. And then you can see that as we keep moving along towards the right, this approximation is going to get more and more accurate. Now, let's just do some exercises with this and say, okay, let's say we have this bunch of numbers here and we want to round them to two significant figures. So let's start with the first one. So for this particular case, significant figures essentially means just numbers from the left-hand side other than zero. So if we had any zeros there, the zero would not count as a significant figure, so we would move on to the next one. So in this case, we have this situation here. So we're going to look at the number right on the right hand side of 5. This is a 6. And basically what that means is that we're going to be looking at this number and we're going to determine whether it's closer to 10 or 0. In this case it's closer to 10 so we're going to round it up. And if this is rounded up this becomes 0 and this is going to add a 1 to this digit here. So the whole number is going to be written as 2600. So this would be the same number rounded to two significant figures. Now let's do the second, the, the next one. So we have this number, it has some decimal places, but because we're talking about significant figures, we're only talking about basically the digits from the left-hand side. So we're going to start again, we grab the first two, and we're going to look at everything on the right-hand side. So the next digit is a zero, so that doesn't really tell us much about it. So we could easily just jump into the next one and we could say, well, if we round this one up, this one is be going to become zero, this is going to become one, but then look at what happens here. This is a one that's much closer to zero than it is to 10. So that means that we're actually going to round down the whole number. So this is going to be rounded to 23,000. <laughs> And that's going to be the case because you can see that this number is a lot closer to 23,000 than, say, 24,000. And it, that's pretty obvious from this example. So we need to be careful in, in the way that we round things if, if we want to do it correctly. Now, question C here, that's a little bit tricky because we notice that the first two digits, so remember when we're talking about figures, we're, we're not really distinguishing between whole numbers and decimals, so everything is just a figure. So the first two figures would be these two, and we notice they're both zeros. Now we talked about how zeros do not count as significant figures, so that means that we need to jump straight into the next two digits, so that would be this one and that one. Now in this case the zero is a significant figure and the reason for that is that it is preceded by a number that is larger than zero. So if we had any situation in which the zero is basically uh, comes after some other digit that is say one, two, three and so on, then it does count as a, as a significant figure. But if it appears before other digits, then it does not count. So now we're going to look at the number here, right? So these two are going to be our two significant figures, and then this is going to be 9. So that's much closer to 10, so we're going to round this up. This one is going to become a 1. So this is going to be approximated as 0 0.041. Alright, so now let's do the next one. This one is pretty easy. We grab the first two. Now we're going to look at this number. Is that closer to zero? Well, yeah, in this case, it is closer to zero, so we're going to round this down. So this is going to be approximately equal to 2400. For this one, we have the same situation. We notice immediately that this term is zero, so we're just going to leave it at that. So it means that we're going to round the whole, the whole thing down. So everything on the right is just going to become zero. So we're going to have 35,000. For this one, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to do the same thing. We have 2, we have a 0, but it is preceded by a 2. So now we look at the figure on the, on the right-hand side that's a 7, and we notice, okay, so we could easily round that up. So that means that this is going to become a 10, and this is going to become a 1. So this is going to be 2.1. And for the last example here, 
Now, this one is a little bit trickier, but we noticed that we can use the exact same techniques that we have been using thus far to actually find the answer. Now, let's look at the first digit. That one is a zero, so that does not count as a significant figure. The next three digits are also zero, do not count as significant figures, but these two here do because they're six and four, so that means that now these two are gonna become our significant figures and five is going to determine the way in which we ran this. Five means that we're gonna run this up to 10, so that means that we're gonna add a one to the next digit. So this is going to be written as 0 0.00065. And that's going to be the same number rounded up to two significant figures. So hopefully this is giving you an idea of the difference between decimals and significant figures. They're quite similar in the way that they're implemented and the way that we round things either up or down. The rules are very similar. But for significant figures, the main difference is that we're always looking at the numbers from the left-hand side. So we're always starting off with the whole numbers. Whereas with decimals, we're always starting from the decimal point. So I guess that's the main difference between it. And even with decimals, if you had zeros there, it would still count. But usually with decimals, it's a fixed place. Whereas with significant figures, we have this situation where we actually need to skip to the next digit if the first one is not counted as a significant figure, as is in the case of this one. So hopefully this video has shown you the main difference between those and now you're more comfortable with rounding things up and down. This can actually be quite useful for when you're dealing with very large numbers or numbers that contain just a lot of decimal places in, in general. You can always do this kind of thing and you can retain most of the accuracy of the number without having to compromise too much and at least it will make it easier to read and to write down if you're doing something like a spreadsheet, for example, that may contain hundreds and hundreds of numbers on different cells and doing calculations with them.